Okay, here we are on an adventure in the north woods of Maine. Decided we wanted to come up and see the famous Weymouth Point watershed study. We're in Township uh, 4, Range 12, in this so-called Telos area, sort of west of Baxter Park by, what, 15 miles. This study was put in in 1980 um, under the guidance uh, primarily of Max McCormick, the late lamented Max, along with Forest Service scientists and his he had PhD student, Tat Smith, who did his uh, research here. And the study's purpose was to look at the effect of whole tree harvesting on the nutrient cycle and the water flow off of a small headwater stream watersheds. We're not very far from Chizunkook Lake here, and there are two watersheds, one which was clear cut completely and one which was uh, saved and not harvested. This is 1980. Uh, what, 45 years ago now, we are in the control untreated watershed. And it's this magnificent stand now of almost pure red spruce. There are scattered large white pines and a few large hardwoods. Um, there's easily, I did a thumb count here, there's probably 250 or more square feet of basal area standing at this spot, almost all spruce. This is a 2 H stand that spruce has probably originated back in the 1870s, maybe, most of them, from the saw log cuttings then. And then there was the bad budworm outbreak came through here in World War I, a little over 100 years ago, um, created another cohort, more of fir. That fir has grown up here and then mostly died out. You can, if you look around the forest floor, you can see scattered remnants of it, but it's largely gone. There are some uh, fir trees in the understory here. We're in kind of an understory reinitiation stage. Most of the regeneration generally throughout the stand is, is spruce, which is something you tend not to see. This may well be the last remaining block. This is about 130 acres here, this control watershed of this kind of forest, which was over millions of acres up here 50, 40 years ago when I first arrived. So, uh, and it's really not been replaced. It's been regenerated to something that's uh, different. Um, Jess is panning around here, looking at just to get the sort of the sense of the conditions. Um, the, uh, the findings were there, there was a, a lot of nutrient leakage right after the complete clear cutting, uh, mostly nitrate and some cations like calcium leached out into the water. That was followed for about a decade, a little more than that, by uh, scientists at the Cooperative Research Unit. And there's a lot more to the story. Uh, we'll, we'll continue this when we get out into the, look and see what came in the, the harvested watersheds. Okay, here we are in the, uh, our first exploration into the harvested watershed. Again, cut, clear cut completely 45 years ago with the whole tree system, roadside delimbing. And we're on one of the original, one of Pat Smith's original plots. This tube here, as you can see, but at the base of this fir tree is a lysimeter where they measured the soil solution for uh, nutrient content. So what was leaking out of the ecosystem once the trees were gone, they would capture that in the groundwater and then analyze that and determine what, where, what, source was and quantify that. I mean the obvious uh, incredibly discouraging story here is that we've gone from a beautiful high volume spruce fir forest with scattered hardwoods in it to a situation where we now have nothing but red maple, a few white birch, and maybe a scattered fir tree and some aspen, right? This is essentially a complete forest type conversion, right, from that beautiful old native spruce fir forest to this uh, other community. And the reason for that is clear. This is just due to the excessive site disturbance from that harvest that eliminated all the advanced regeneration, right? Which spruce and fir depends on. Um, this whole watershed, it was, it was clear cut. And, uh, and then in, let's see, uh, uh, in five years later, there was an aerial release spray done on the whole, most of the treated watershed. So this may have actually been herbicided and then this is regrowth after the original cohort of hardwoods was killed because of course there was nothing to release here, right? Um, so uh, 
Not a good story. This was one of the plots that the scientists who recently published on this uh, deleted from the analysis. It's on all the original data, but one of three plots um, was not used, at least for the above ground veg data. And one wonders if it was because it just didn't regenerate well. Others, I'm sure, did, and we'll go in search of those in a minute. Okay. Okay, we're now over in the harvested watershed. This was clear cut in 1980 with these very large coring feller forwarders, which had these giant tiger. They were uh, they cut the trees with a with a mechanized felling head, put the whole trees right in a bunk, and the, the original ones would store about eight cords, like a wheeler load of wood, in their bunk as they munched through the that spruce fir that we just saw in the control watershed. And then they would go to the roadside and dump it where it'd be delimbed mechanically and they'd come back. And they were notorious for not having great flotation. The soil, I and mean, when they ever got in wet soils, they would sink in down to the hard pan, which is the sea horizon here. And these, this is on the Chizunka Katina. Uh, we're on probably a somewhat poorly, moderately well drained portion of the harvested watershed. And you can see behind me here is a wheel rut from that coring made 45 years ago, one tire. And then we come over here, six, again, 16 feet to the outside of the track. We see another uh, essentially rut down to the hard pan going up through there. There are trees growing, mostly aspen and hardwoods, occasional fir tree right in the middle here between the tracks. But this, of course, because it's down to the, the hard pan of the soil, there's no way the roots in the middle of those trees or the ones adjacent to it, for that matter, can penetrate this. There's no available soil for them. So this is bad news. And the fact that it's still here after 45 years is, is I guess, predictable, uh, and, but discouraging. So we're going to go see if we can find the actual plot here, and then we'll talk further. Okay, here we are, uh, deeper into the harvested block again 45 year old stand uh here it looks like the herbicide was very effective and the this harvesting disturbance uh managed to conserve the small advanced seedlings so we have a very dense uh, thickety spruce fir stand that would be borderline commercially thinnable maybe in five years and that's about right 50 years with no pre-commercial thinning about 50 years is when they're operable you can see, you know, merchantable fir trees all over the place here, but there would be almost no way you could do this commercially and capture enough product to make it pay. Um, the, uh, the discouraging thing about this is how many spruce trees do you see here? I mean, you can look hard and find one every 50 feet maybe. This is almost pure fir. So not only have we seen the type change in some cases to hardwood, and the other type case where the softwood was conserved is now all fir. And that was because those old stands were a little different than the video showed. They were more in stem exclusion. The only advanced regeneration under all that nice spruce was fir. It hadn't, the spruce had yet to reproduce, I guess, uh, at least widespread uh, fashion. So, uh, so what got released was just fir, right? Clearly, this is painting a picture of this sh should have been done, treated with a shelterwood system, like most landowners have come to do now. But that was just very difficult or impossible at that time because of the equipment and the stand conditions. Okay, here we are in another part of the treated watershed uh, that was sprayed and came back more to coniferous regeneration. In the mid-1990s, Russell Briggs, who's now at uh, SUNY ESF, so for a soil scientist, he was working for the CFRU then on our faculty, Maine and put in some, uh, some thinning plots, pre-commercial thinning plots. Uh, this would have been in about, the stands would have been about 12, 15 years old then from origin in the mid 90s. He fertilized some of them, that had no effect, but I suspect, I'm not certain, but I think we're on one of those thinning plots right now and you can see that the balsam fir has responded tremendously. The firs here are all like between seven and 10 inches or more. There is a few more spruce here too, which they, they would have certainly tried to release any spruce that was present. But it's still not all that fully stocked. I mean, there's an aspen still in the, in the residual stand. And this is 
certainly nothing like uh, the, the original forest here or what's over there on the untreated watershed. It does show that thinning works though, and you could easily harvest these trees now and they probably should be cut. That bird's gonna be, probably already has decay. So, good.